We're really looking forward to hearing more about full self-driving and their autonomous plans. Um, we think that's the largest market opportunity ahead of Tesla. Um, you know, autonomous driving could displace about um, eight trillion worth of enterprise value in the public equity markets today. This is very disruptive. Um, so, so it's it's key to be a leader here, and and we think Tesla is. Welcome to Electrified. It's your host Dylan Loomis. So what was Tasha referring to when she mentioned $8 trillion in enterprise value disruption? Well, to start, enterprise value is just a more comprehensive valuation metric than market cap alone. It basically adds short-term and long-term debt as well as any cash that a company has on their balance sheet. Enterprise value is a very popular metric when used to value a corporate takeover. But where will this displacement come from and when will it begin? So AV or autonomous vehicle use cases with low traffic complexity and low speed should deploy first. This table will summarize the main AV use cases. Fixed route passenger transport is among the simplest AV use cases. Fixed routes with low to moderate speed requirements have already completed many tests and some deployments. Closed venue applications, think of airports, universities, and similar settings are also deploying as well. Another early use case would be AVs for last mile goods delivery. This would include things like grocery and meal deliveries and e-commerce deliveries as well. As you probably know, with things like DoorDash and Grubhub, current deliveries are still via human-driven vehicles. Going further, autonomous trucks are used for hub-to-hub -hub trucking, which are simple AV use cases because these routes are mostly highways, which current AV software technology does already manage as seen with Tesla's Navigate on Autopilot. Right now, first and last miles of hub-to-hub -hub trucking are still done by truck drivers, but there is a truck driver shortage in a lot of areas, especially long haul, which makes this a very desirable autonomous vehicle segment. So it's very easy to see the scale of this disruption, even just in the early stages. However, this will be amplified by the concurrent introduction of battery electric vehicles and the expansion of mobility as a service business models. Of course, the timeline is still very unclear as we're in the very early stages, but it really is no longer a question of if it will happen, but rather when and how fast. Reddit user OrbitalATK shared an up-close picture of the double-pane windows on the Model Y. This car had a VIN in the upper 63,000 range and was delivered sometime in the last two to three days. Back in 2019, famous EV YouTuber Bjorn Nyland shared that the Model 3 ranked in the bottom 50% of an extensive test to see which vehicles had the best cabin noise ratings. Around the same time, the Musk bros asked if any improvements to the cabin noise were expected, to which Elon replied, that's significantly improved in the current production. That was October 2019. And yes, we can expect these double pane windows on all vehicles in their lineup. Hopefully in the next few weeks, we will get an updated sound test with the new double pane windows. RBB24 out of Berlin has reported that Tesla fired their project manager for the construction of Giga Berlin, Evan Horetsky. The exact reasons for the dismissal are unclear, but it is fairly safe to say that it was not directly stemming from the unpaid water bill as a LinkedIn comment from a week before that situation had coworkers saying that it was a pleasure to work with Evan, implying that he was already expected to be released from Tesla prior to the water bill situation. But more importantly, most reports and most of the speculation say that construction is not expected to be interrupted. Brandenburg's economics minister Jorg Steinbach does not see the dismissal of Horetsky as a bad sign for factory construction. He told the RBB that it's not unusual for such large projects to change over time. He added, he also knows the person who is currently taking over for the tasks of Mr. Horetsky. I know he's doing a good job and I think you're noticing that at the moment because things are going on the construction site without a hitch. Evan had worked at Tesla for over five years so time will tell if he's being repositioned to a new role or if he was officially terminated completely from Tesla. We get some news on the license requirements in Shanghai as Dennis Chang tweeted, Today, Shanghai government surprise released a policy to further limit the routes and time slots of cars needing to wear a plate issued outside of Shanghai. This will boom Tesla sales as it offers free plates, otherwise they would need to pay roughly $10,000 at auction. A few important things to break down here. One, his comment about Tesla offering free plates. This was very difficult to confirm, so if anyone has more information on that, please let me know below. 
but I was able to track down the article from Shine that said cars with non-Shanghai plates will not be able to use most of the elevated roads in urban parts of Shanghai from 7 a.m. to 8 p.m. on workdays starting November 2nd, according to the Shanghai police. Cars using temporary plates driven by learner drivers and taxis carrying no passengers will also be subject to the restrictions. However, these restrictions do not apply on the weekends or national holidays. As part of the Chinese government's push to transition to electric vehicles, they included exemptions from license plate restrictions. Now, if you're not familiar, people in China sometimes have to pay anywhere from ten to fifteen thousand dollars in order to obtain a license before they can actually own a vehicle because of the high congestion and traffic in Shanghai and some of the bigger cities in China. I know that the rules on these license plates differ from city to city, but in Shanghai, about 10 Chinese models of EVs do qualify for free license plates. And I know back in 2014, buyers of Teslas in Shanghai did indeed qualify for the free license plates. Back in 2014, the blog post said, it received further media attention thanks to the Shanghai government's announcement that Model S drivers in the city would be entitled to free license plates, thereby avoiding the usual public auction price of ten to $15,000 per plate. Since Model S pricing in China was already very competitive, this makes the car's value proposition even more compelling. But that of course was roughly six years ago, so more recently in March 2020, Tasmanian did report that Beijing planned to release special licenses for BEVs to boost sales of EVs after the pandemic. The Beijing government typically set a quota of 50,000 new vehicle license plate registrations per year, but it was reported that they were going to increase that to 100,000, which would of course positively impact the demand for Teslas. So once again, if you have any more reliable information on this topic, please let me know below. I would greatly appreciate it. We get Tesla's new quarterly accident data information. In the third quarter, Tesla registered one accident for every 4.59 million miles driven in which drivers had autopilot engaged. For those driving without autopilot but with active safety features, they registered one accident for every 2.42 million miles driven. For those driving without autopilot and without active safety features, they registered one accident for every 1.79 million miles driven. For comparison, NHTSA's most recent data shows that in the US there is an auto crash every 479,000 miles. So the takeaway here is that Teslas with autopilot are roughly 10 times safer than non-Teslas. This does not even take into consideration the fact that Teslas rank at the very top in the world in terms of crash test safety. So more than the technology and the joy to own, if you do care about safety and have the resources, you should be considering buying a Tesla. But I'd like to wrap up this video by talking about lithium prices this year. Of course, in the short term, demand for lithium has been impacted by COVID, but in the medium to long term, the demand prospects for lithium are of course very strong. However, the COVID impacts are fairly significant as Benchmark Minerals expects 2020 lithium demand to be lower than that of 2019. This is clearly a very important topic, but coming into 2020, lithium was actually already in a low price environment, which has persisted since the price falls of 2018 and that continued through 2019. Now, you would think that this is great news for Tesla as material costs are lower, but there are two problems with this logic. One, Tesla and most other lithium purchasers agree into long-term lithium deals, so only once every few years are they negotiating with suppliers. This means that they're often fixed into a set lithium price for anywhere from three to 10 years. And two, this low price environment has put pressure on the new generation of producers that have come online that are tasked to meet this new market growth and there have already been companies going out of business among Australia's spotamine producers. Rising spotamine prices have incentivized a number of new producers to come online in 2017 and 18, but since then, spotamine prices have more than halved from their $900 per ton peak. What this means is that the low price environment is insufficient to incentivize new producers, which means a lack of a new supply, and this would translate into more price volatility in the medium term. Now, as we learned at Battery Day, Tesla does plan to move upstream as they set a new precedent in which they would build a lithium hydroxide chemical plant in Texas which would be the first in the industry. They would basically control the lithium conversion from the raw material, which is the spotamine concentrate, that would enable Tesla to reduce overall costs 
and control the quality of its lithium hydroxide output more closely. Toward the end of September, Piedmont Lithium did announce that they had reached an agreement to sell a lithium intermediate product called Spotamine Concentrate to Tesla for five years on a fixed price basis. As mentioned, the Spotamine Concentrate is used to make lithium hydroxide, which is then used to make batteries. Tim McKenna, Piedmont's Director of Investor and Government Relations, said Tesla's requirement would eventually consume about one third of the output at the mine, which is being developed in 200 acres in Gaston County, North Carolina. But I will leave you with a few of the newest and daytime full self-driving beta clips for your enjoyment. Please consider liking this video if you did, consider subscribing for more Tesla content, and I look forward to seeing you in the next video. Have a great day. Now this is kind of a busy road. Um, like sometimes you have to be aggressive to make this right. It's gonna be, I, I, I anticipate I'll be taking over, but we'll see. See, it stopped way back here and it really needs to ease up some. Okay, well, it did it. I wouldn't have done it that way. Um, I actually wanna save that. I'm encouraging it to get into the right lane. Turn yeah. on the red. Does it oh, oh, now. What, whoa. Okay, I have to take over. It's veering too far right there. We're gonna see what it does. Okay, now we're clear. That's new. They never had those Did lights it before. Oh, it's no. going green. Hmm. Yep, good, good. In 500 feet, turn right to take the Interstate 210 West Ramp. Let's see, now so it's driving. Right Let's see how it takes interstate this. Interstate 210 West Ramp. Okay, turn signal. Perfect. There's the entryway. Crosswalk at C's. Transition. That was weird. Okay, it kind of had some trouble there, but it got into the uh, HOV lane. Now transition oh. to nav on AP. Yeah, it stopped right at that it's light. A little, little weedy, but not too bad. Turn right onto Palencia Okay, Boulevard. let's see where it transitions here. I think it's the lines. Boom. There we go, yeah. transition. Now we're back onto the FSD beta. Now turn right onto Valencia Boulevard. Careful. I'm letting it do its thing. There's a car behind me, but it's behaving itself somewhat. Okay, it did that all by itself. I didn't do any intervention there on any well, that's on anything. Okay, coming on the rotary again. Um, this time I'm going to be taking the same exit, so let's see if it, yes, it chose the correct lane. It's going. There was nobody coming, but it didn't even hesitate. Same spot it hesitated yesterday, but better. Can you that. do that t t turny thing? Yeah. Oh, neat. Oh. Oh, is that a ped? We've yes. got a ped. Ooh, ooh, watch the ped. Let's go. Ooh, look at the ped go. Walkie walk. He's blocked by the car. Walkie walk. So there he where is. Where's the ped go? There's the ped. Hello, ped. <laughs> wow, look at that. Wow. When does it decide to make cars? Blue versus like regular red. I can't remember the key, the color key. It that's related to it, how it's possibly interacting with us.